Hi, uh, today I wanted to cover off a fairly popular question, uh, which is uh, which of the two main operating systems we have uh, should you use on your NAS if it supports both? Um, so just a quick reminder that all NAS um, that we have that support QUTS Hero can also run QTS, which is why there's a choice, which is why there's a question. Um, not all NAS that run QTS can run QUTS Hero though. It's, um, it's not a, a both ways thing. So typically, um, if your NAS supports QUTS Hero, uh, you definitely can run QTS as well, just not the other way around. Um, so we'll jump straight in with, um, I guess, the agenda. So here we've got um, a quick comparison. So just a quick table showing you the different um, main features between the two. There are, of course, more. I've just picked the main ones. Um, I'll go through some of those ones that I've picked in a bit more detail. Um, they might not be so clear from just a heading. Um, and then I've also got a, a page at the end uh, with a few bullet points just explaining uh, when you should definitely use Hero or um, you know if you don't meet any of those questions then QTS might be enough. Um, so depending on the scenario uh, we'll, we'll go through the different options that we've got there. It's not really as simple as just the bullet points. There, there sometimes is more factors but some of those are very decisive um, that if you definitely um, meet some of those requirements then going with QUTS Heroes um, pretty much the only choice for you, um, but will become obvious when we get to that slide. Uh, so here's a, a quick comparison between the two. Uh, so starting off at the, I guess, the biggest difference between the two um, is the file system. So uh, QTS is our um, oldest file system. We've had it now for, I think, around 15 years. Um, and uh, it's gone through a bit of evolution over the years, but right now it's settled on ext4 as the file system. Um, great file system. We've done a lot of improvements with it, um, increasing the maximum volume size, things like that, adding snapshot functionality over the years. Uh, but ext4 um, is the main file system, and moving over to QUTS Hero, it runs ZFS. Um, ZFS brings a lot of extra features. In fact, the next two features are the main two it brings with it. So it's got um, inline uh, data deduplication as well as inline compression. Um, just a quick caveat that um, whilst you can install uh, QUTS Hero um, with a lower amount of RAM than this, you need at least 16 gig of RAM in your NAS to be able to enable inline deduplication. Um, inline compression is another one. Generally, inline compression is on by default. Um, inline data deduplication is not. Um, there is also another one called inline compaction, um, but there's, uh, those are the main functions brought across by ZFS. Uh, when we first launched uh, QUTS Hero, um, we did have a upper volume limit of one petabyte, uh, but that got changed quite a while ago now in the firmware updates. Um, so it's now got a upper max volume size of five petabytes. So five petabytes, really massive. Um, whereas with QTS, it is at 250 terabytes, which for a lot of users with smaller NAS, um, 250 terabytes is still pretty much like unlimited. If you've got a four bay NAS, you know, the biggest drives you can get today are only 22 terabytes. Um, so you, you can't even hit that 250 terabyte limit anyway in, in a lot of the sizes of NAS. It only really affects the really, really big ones. Or if you start attaching lots of expansion shelves, things like that. Um, when it gets to the next feature here, auto tiering. So this, uh, by this I mean um, SSD auto tiering. So um, if you've got many different tiers of performance in your storage, so perhaps you've got a few SATA hard drives in your NAS, um, maybe some SATA SSDs and maybe as well some NVMe SSDs. Uh, with auto tiering, you're able to um, set priorities depending on uh, which is hot data uh, to move the data from the lower tiers um, up the, through the tiers to where it's got more performance. So it's very dynamic, happens automatically, um, but that is available on QTS. Uh, currently, it is not possible to use auto tiering within QUTS Hero. Uh, the next one is SSD cache, available on both. Um, with QTS, it's a bit more of a traditional read and write setup, uh, so it accelerates data both ways. Whereas with QUTS Hero, um, it's read only. It does have a very small sort of element of write in there with a zil write log, but um, ultimately it is just a read-only cache. Uh, data security, um, so really good data security on QTS, um, but it is better on QUTS Hero. ZFS brings in the self-healing file system um, as, as well as copy on write as well. A bit more of in, on that uh, in a few slides as well. 
the minimum RAM needed to run both. Um, I've put here for QTS it's 2 gig. Technically it will work on 1 gig. It's just we don't sell any NAS anymore that only have 1 gig of RAM. So the smallest one you can buy uh, will have 2 gig these days. Uh, but you can have um, 2 gig. Uh, whereas with QUTS Hero you can um, install it on your NAS if you only have 8 gig of RAM. Again, as I mentioned earlier, some features uh, will not be possible to be enabled with 8 gig of RAM. Um, but traditionally with ZFS, um, the more RAM the better. Um, so typically I would generally recommend a minimum of 32 gig uh, for the best experience in the NAS. Um, so a lot of our higher end NAS that have QUTS Hero as standard on them, um, they would all start at 32 gig. Some start much higher, but 32 gig is sort of the base I'd say for a uh, very well performing, very capable unit with a, with a lot of flexibility in it. Uh, the next one is a, a feature called WORM, which stands for uh, Write Once, Read Many. Um, this is a feature brought into our uh, NAS ecosystem by ZFS. Um, so it's a, a really good feature. You'll see it a lot in, say, online banking, things like that. They'll use WORM as in the back end, but I'll cover that off in a bit more detail later on. But it's not possible uh, to do the, the WORM functionality on QTS directly. Um, both operating systems do have um, a feature for snapshot replication. We call it snapshot replica. Um, they're not uh, compatible with each other, so you can only do snapshot replica from QTS to QTS as well as QUTS Hero to QUTS Hero. So even though they're called the same thing, um, you can't do it between the OSs. It's simply because the file system is different between them, so it's not possible. Um, but QUTS Hero does bring um, an extra function which is called snap sync, which is sort of snapshot replica but much better. Um, so in most cases, um, most people would be using SnapSync. Um, way more functionality, uh, real-time options. Um, I will go into it in a bit more detail later on, but SnapSync is a, a much better way to get your snapshots replicated from one NAS to another. Um, so now we'll go through a few of the differences in detail. Uh, so auto-tiering, um, on the uh, QTS operating system, uh, this is called QTier. Um, so again, this is a feature that's only available in QTS. Um, so it's completely automatic. It moves data um, after analyzing it for a bit. So you can set the thresholds when it happens. Um, so it's going to look at your data usage um, over a period of time. Um, and then it's going to see what data is becoming uh, hot data. Um, perhaps there's some data in the cold area. Uh, the cold area would typically be your SATA hard drives. Um, the uh, warm tier could be uh, SAS, Neoline SAS drives, or perhaps SATA SSDs. Um, and at the very top end, at the hot end, it could be um, NVMe SSDs typically these days. Um, so depending on where the data is, if it's in the cold tier, it's becoming accessed more and more. Initially, it might get moved to the warm tier. Then after a bit more access, it may get promoted all the way up to the hot tier. Um, and the same time that's happening, data that's now no longer as hot as it once was, um, not being accessed that often, will be moving its way down the tiers to free up the capacity. So typically the, um, the cold tier will be the largest tier. It will be the tier that um, costs you the least per terabyte, if you like. So the lower cost SATA hard drive. So you'll usually have a lot of space there. Let's say you could have up to 20 terabytes there. Um, the warm tier may be uh, SATA SSDs. Here you might have four or five terabytes in, in SATA SSDs, whereas at the very hot tier at the top end, you might only have a terabyte or two of the NVMe SSD in there, um, but that's where you're gonna get the most performance. So we're gonna move data around where it needs to be um, for the best access, best experience for everybody using the device. So moving into data security, so ZFS is very clever in how it manages its data. Um, so anything, other file systems may suffer from things like silent data corruption. So um, it could be done when the data is initially stored. If it wasn't checked, perhaps stored and you weren't using ECC RAM. Um, there was a, an incident with a observatory um, effectively on top of a mountain. I think it was in Chile. Um, I think our US office was talking about this one once where um, there was effectively a solar storm and their data got corrupted. So they came to us looking for a solution um, for something that was a bit more robust. So we went 
went in with a, a ZFS solution, ECC RAM, um, so that they would be avoid the data corruption issues. So they were very exposed. I think there's a low ozone layer down there, so there was very little protection uh, for things coming in. I don't know the exact detail. I might be uh, making a fool of myself explaining that one, but um, there was a really good solution there where they needed some better protection, so we were able to do that uh, with the ZFS option. Um, but it automatically repairs damage if damage is discovered, um, so it'll use data from another mirror um, before the data is passed to the application. So it's very, very uh, quick at doing this, does it all in real time as the data comes in. Uh, really good technology for keeping your data safe in ZFS. So again, this is a QUTS Hero feature. Uh, moving on to another QUTS Hero feature, which is the WOM feature. Uh, again, write once, read many. Um, we did have um, a few applications in this, but the most, I guess, common one where you'll come across this on a day-to-day -day basis uh, without realizing it uh, will be your banking system. Um, so if you've ever um, perhaps received a transaction into your bank account or anything like this uh, where you weren't necessarily uh, meant to have it. So for example, somebody accidentally transferred some money to you, maybe the bank took it back. Um, they don't just delete the transaction, they can't. Uh, once a transaction's in your banking, it's there forever. Um, for obvious reasons that that's got to be protected. But what they'll do is they'll just cancel it out with another attract, uh, another transaction of the same amount, um, transferring the money out of the bank account, for example. So that, that record will always be there. Once it's written on the statement um, in your transaction log with your bank, it can never be removed. Well, it can be removed, but after a certain period of time. So whatever their regulations require them for data integrity. Um, so on the NAS, we can create folders. So we've got lots of features. We've got enterprise modes, compliance modes, we've got a lock delay. So if you write a file, perhaps you might need to edit that file for, let's say, 10 minutes after first creation. Um, you can, say, set a lock delay for 10 minutes where we won't actually set the lock period until 10 minutes has passed after the creation. So you can choose different options here within it. Um, but write once, read many again, QUTS Hero only for this one. Um, SnapSync, uh, so real real-time um, replication of your backups effectively, a real-time sync of your um, snapshot data from your primary NAS to your secondary NAS. Um, so there's a little image there sort of uh, describing it, but it's going to get the data from your primary one over there in real time. So as soon as there's a change, as soon as we sense a new snapshot on the primary NAS, that very second we're getting it across uh, to the uh, to the secondary NAS so that your um, sort of disaster recovery RPO um, is basically down to zero. You're not going to lose anything if there is any hardware failures at the primary NAS location. Um, so it's a really efficient way of getting your data up and running again. Um, you can see the dotted line there. So if the primary NAS was ever to go down, um, the production server can simply just go and use the secondary NAS. The data on there is going to be the same that was on the primary NAS. Um, the only thing you've really got to do is reset the permissions. So whatever permissions you had on the primary NAS, you've just got to set them up on the secondary NAS. Uh, but once you disable SnapSync over there, you're able to use it. You're able to access the data. There's no restore action or anything like that. You don't have to restore the snapshots. They're ready to go. They're stored in a ready to go state on the secondary NAS. So you're back up and running as quick as possible. Um, faster RAID rebuild times as well. So if you're with QUTS Hero, um, it's very clever in how it goes about getting the data um, rebuilt when there's a failure of a disk um, or there's a problem on the, on the unit. So I've written here that ZFS can be much faster. So in most cases it is. So if you've got, let's say in this example here, we've got um, uh, 22 terabyte drives in a RAID 6. Let's say that's around 16 terabytes of free space. Um, but if the actual amount of used data is only six terabytes out of the 16 terabytes, if there's a drive failure, we only potentially have to rebuild up to the maximum of the six terabytes used. So it only rebuilds areas of the disk where data blocks are rather than the whole disk, whereas traditional RAID, um, like would be on QTS, um, it's going to rebuild the whole set of disks, the whole area of the pool that's been um, affected by the disk failure. Um, so in that example, it would be rebuilding everything from where the data is as well as the data isn't, so effectively the empty space. Um, you can imagine how much more efficient it would be that if you had, say, a 100 terabyte array but only had 10 terabytes on it. Um, if you had a failure at that moment, instead of rebuilding 100 terabytes, it only has to rebuild the 10. So much, much faster, uh, much more intelligent at doing RAID rebuilds with ZFS. 
Uh, so now moving on to the, the final slide here, just to talk about when you would use QUTS Hero. So I've picked out five sort of major points. There are other mitigating factors that may come up, but um, typically if you need a larger volume than 250 terabytes, easy choice, you've got to go to QUTS Hero. Um, that's the limit on QTS. So if you need it bigger than that, go to QUTS Hero. Um, if you have a large amount of duplicated data, so very um, common situations of this is uh, people with large virtual deployments uh, where they may have a uh, hundred instances of Windows Server running or Windows 10 in a VDI environment um, schools where they may send out information to students and they all put the same document in their user folders um, so it's stored hundreds of thousands of times over um, so those sort of applications are very um, concentrated with a lot of duplicated data. Uh, typically, if you were what we would call, say, uh, um, someone in the media and entertainment industry, uh, photographer, things like that, there's really no need to enable data deduplication. Um, you, you don't really have a lot of data that's different. Even if you've got a camera and you've snapped 10 pictures within half a second, each one of those pictures is typically going to be unique, so the data wouldn't be duplicated between the pictures. Um, there's enough change with the lighting and whatnot that it's, it's not going to save you... Um, um, any capacity doing it, but certain instances definitely worth having data deduplication and choosing QUTS Hero because of it. Um, if you do not require auto tiering, great option to go with QUTS Hero. Um, so with, with QUTS Hero, it's a bit more suited to platforms maybe that are all SSD arrays, like the unit at the bottom right of the slide there. So if it was an all SSD array, you wouldn't need tiering, it's all fast anyway. Um, but if you don't need it, it's great. If you do need auto tiering, QTS is a great option. Um, if faster data recovery is critical, again, back to SnapSync. So faster data recovery, um, it does real time. So your RPO is low. Your uh, getting back up and running with your data is instant because there is no uh, restore to get the data back into a state that's um, able to be used. It's already stored in that state. Um, and also if you require a larger SSD cache. Now over the years, we have increased the SSD cache size with QTS. Uh, I think when it first came out, its upper limit was uh, four terabytes. Um, then we upped it to a little bit more than it, I think now it's uh, with QTS5, um, it's up to uh, 5.1, it's up to 16 terabytes. Um, but if you needed any larger, we do have units that can go much higher with QUTS Hero. Um, so you can go all the way up to 120 terabyte SSD cache size with QUTS Hero. So we do have a couple of customers that have needed to go up to that size. Um, it does require a lot of RAM in QUTS Hero to do that, but it is possible we are able to do it with a couple of our units. Um, so if you do need a larger cache size, really, really good to choose QUTS Hero. Um, just to sort of add to the final end here, um, QTS is, is very good as well. Uh, in my scenario with my home NAS, my home NAS is just a three bay NAS. Um, I really don't meet any of the requirements that are on screen here. Um, sure, faster data recovery is is critical, but for me, fast is, you know, so long as I get it back in a couple of days, that's fine. Um, for a large multinational business, you know, minutes matters. So for me, not so much. So I'm, I'm happy using QTS on my home NAS. Uh, means I can have a lower cost NAS with less performance, uh, uses less power. Um, but sure, QUTS Hero, its setup is quicker, RAID rebuilds when, when drives inevitably fail over time um, would be faster um, but uh, there is always a situation for QTS in some scenarios uh, so it, there is an option for both. Uh, QTS is not going anywhere we're not switching to QUTS Hero across the board uh, we are developing both side by side and there are always reasons to go with one over the other um, kind of hoping that this video tries to help people understand the differences one to the other and um, try to demystify it a bit the difference between the two OS's. Um, if you do have an as that can run QUTS Hero and QTS um, I recommend having a play with both so set it up initially don't put your data on it yet just have a mess around change some settings um, do some performance testing with QUTS Hero factory reset it put it back to QTS do the same there see which one suits you best um, and then finally get your data in. Um, so it's uh, really easy to switch between them. Uh, the only thing I would say is you cannot maintain any data that's on the drives when you switch from QTS to QTS Hero or vice versa. Um, the data is on different file systems and there's just no way to keep that intact. So if you are uh, having to play around moving from one to the other, just do it before you've uh, seeded and terabytes and terabytes of data into it. Um, wait till you've decided which OS you're definitely happy to be using. 
Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, please do let me know um, in the comments section down below, um, and I'll try to get back to you as quick as possible. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.